Well, one of the great things about uh, teaching at Penn is to have access to the Penn Museum, which is one of the country's great museums. And for me especially, I'm, I teach Islamic history in the uh, Department of Near Eastern Languages and Civilizations, or NELC as we call it. And every year I teach a class called NELC 102, the Introduction to the Middle East, uh, in which uh, I survey the history of the Middle East from the rise of Islam from around 600 AD until the present day. So it's a big class. And I am, I was, I'm constantly looking for ways to get students involved in the museum. And uh, it was, it was in a convers during a conversation with Brian Rose, the deputy director of the museum, that um, we hit upon a, uh, one way in which students might be involved in the museum in a way more than just a simple tour, a kind of show and tell, which is something that a lot of professors do. Um, Brian came up with the idea of getting students involved not just in looking at material in our lovely uh, Islamic gallery here, but also in, impro in improving the Islamic gallery slightly. Um, we have a, uh, we have had for, for a long time a, a very nice, perfectly functional map uh, of the Islamic world hanging in the gallery. But uh, given the, uh, the way in which printing technology and graphic design uh, has changed over the years, particularly with the use of computers, it seemed like a good opportunity uh, to maybe get, to, to get a new map put in the gallery and also to include students in that process. So kind of like a reality TV show, we sort of had, we had a, a contest. I had students from my Introduction to the Middle East class uh, uh, compete uh, to design a new map for the gallery. They did so either, they could do so either individually or as uh, members of a team. And it, well, it turned out to be a, a really great assignment in that it forced students and me to start thinking about what gallery, what museums and galleries within museums do. Uh, they had to consider what jobs they wanted that map to do. Um, uh, that is, what, what were the messages this map uh, uh, was supposed to convey to visitors to the gallery. But in the end, we wound up choosing uh, between two and combining them, uh, combining elements of both. It, it was uh, a map designed by a NELK undergraduate major named Sasha Renninger, uh, who's also very active here in the museum, um, which um, incorporated the, or, or, or worked in dialogue with the objects in the gallery in a very clever way in that it was a, she presented a map of the Middle East that also um, indicated on the map where the objects that visitors see in the gallery come from. So that solved the question, that's, that answered the question of location, of place for these objects. It was a map designed by another student, a second student named Ramsey Dennis, um, in the College of General Studies uh, that answered the question of time, that is, who, pro who provided a kind of chronological element to the map that we also incorporated, um, namely timelines. Uh, Ramsey produced historical timelines for different regions within uh, the Islamic Middle East, uh, indicating uh, the different periods of time from the rise of Islam until the present day, the different dynasties that ruled um, and tricked out in different colors uh, the different periods in which the objects in the gallery hail, from which the objects in the gallery hail. So Islamic civilization uh, has its origins in uh, Arabia, what is now Saudi Arabia, um, in the seventh century AD and ultimately spread by the end of what we call in the West, the Middle Ages. It spread geographically from um, Morocco and Spain in the West to um, India uh, and beyond in the east from Central Asia in the north to Sub-Saharan Africa in the south. Uh, uh, so the, um, the challenge for a gallery like this is to convey both the unity and the immense size of the Islamic world and the diversity within that large geograph, that, that large section of the Earth's surface in which Muslims dominated, uh, have dominated historically, um, and the cultural influences and cultural admixture that took place over time. Um, the, the task is simplified a little in this gallery in that no one claims that uh, this gallery is uh, devoted to the uh, art of the entire Islamic world. That would, that would be a much larger gallery and would involve 
um, uh, as I said, uh, artifacts and objects from Morocco to Indonesia. This is uh, rather devoted to one smaller piece of the Islamic world, namely the Near or Middle East, the region from Egypt in the west to Iran in the east. Uh, the gallery right now, as we have it, has objects from, um, uh, from all over that region, uh, from Egypt, um, Syria, um, Iraq, and Iran. A lot of our objects, in fact, come from Iran. Um, and that has a lot to do with uh, uh, Penn Museum's historical connections to um, excavations in Iran, uh, and, also to, and also some lovely architectural features uh, from Egypt, uh, such as this door, which you can see behind me. Um, so that means that it's all, that also means for me that it's perfectly uh, uh, designed for my NELC 102 class, which focuses on precisely precisely that region of the uh, Islamic world, the Near or Middle East, and um, uh, it's been a great tool for me in teaching, in showing in showing students the material culture of this uh, this one small part of the Islamic world. It, I mean, it's one thing to. Uh, talk about in class, um, let's say, uh, Egyptian architecture in the Middle Ages or uh, the importance of uh, gardens uh, in daily life um, in the Islamic world. It's another thing to bring them to the museum and actually show them um, fountains and uh, the uh, plant and vegetal motifs on pottery and on tile. Um, and the uh, animals and uh, people enjoying themselves that are depicted in many, in much of the artwork here. It, it makes PowerPoint pale in, in comparison uh, as a teaching tool. Um, I would say probably personally my favorite aspect of the gallery is uh, the um, objects of daily life uh, that were uh, recovered from excavation at Ray in Iran, which are in this display case, which include the usual sorts of things you find in an archaeological excavation, um, uh, ceramics and pots and so on, but also lovely small objects, so jewelry, um, a, a compass, um, makeup tools, uh, and a mortar and a pestle, those sorts of things that normal people used in normal activities um, on a normal day. Those are very powerful for um, getting across to my students that we are, after all, dealing with normal people when we talk about um, uh, the history of the Middle East uh, with, with lives not very much different uh, from their own. One of the great results of this experiment in having students uh, pitch in to help design the new map for the gallery here has been, for me anyway, um, to force me and my students to think, as I said, about uh, what it is museums do um, and to think intelligently about how museums can be designed to convey information uh, to, the, to the general public. It was also, I think, an, an, a, an unintended result that my students uh, now feel comfortable in the museum, and I hope, I hope that uh, um, more and more professors will get their students involved in the galleries here. My, I, I think students need to realize that the Penn Museum is here, that it's, uh, it offers great opportunities for undergraduate research, not just for sort of annoying assignments that your professors make you do or the sort of uh, you know, um, uh, required tour when your parents come, but uh, offer, offer not only these beautiful objects that you can see on display, uh, but fascinating archives of uh, Penn's activities in anthropology and archaeology uh, since its founding which uh, are really valuable sources uh, for undergraduate research. And uh, they should also realize that what you see in display cases here is just the tip of the iceberg. Even in this one gallery in the Islamic Near East, there are many, many other objects which we simply don't have space to, uh, to display, which are um, available for students to examine and to incorporate in their own research. So uh, I hope that uh, an exercise like this will teach students that uh, the Penn Museum is, after all, their museum, and they should be, they should include it as part of their uh, undergraduate experience here at Penn, just like any other aspect of campus.